Amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. Amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, ALS also referred to as Moten Marone disease MND, Charcot disease and, in the United States, Lou Gehrig's disease is a neurodegenerative disease with various causes. It is characterized by muscle spasticity, rapidly progressive weakness due to muscle atrophy, difficulty in speaking, dysarthria, swallowing, dysphagia, and breathing, dyspnea. ALS is the most common of the five motor neuron diseases. Signs and symptoms. The disorder causes muscle weakness and atrophy throughout the body due to the degeneration of the upper and lower motor neurons. Individuals affected by the disorder may ultimately lose the ability to initiate and control all voluntary movement although bladder and bowel function and the muscles responsible for eye movement are usually spared until the final stages of the disease. 1. Cognitive function is generally spared for most patients, although some, about 5%, also develop frontotemporal dementia. 2. A higher proportion of patients, 30 50% also have more subtle cognitive changes which may go unnoticed, but are revealed by detailed neuropsychological testing. Infrequently ALS coexists in individuals who also experience dementia, degenerative muscle disease, and degenerative bone disease as part of a syndrome called multisystem prokinopathy. 3. Sensory nerves in the autonomic nervous system are generally unaffected, meaning the majority of people with ALS will maintain hearing, sight, touch, smell, and taste. 4. Initial symptoms. The earliest symptoms of ALS are typically obvious weakness and or muscle atrophy. Other presenting symptoms include trouble swallowing, cramping or stiffness of affected muscles, muscle weakness affecting an arm or a leg and or slurred and nasal speech. The parts of the body affected by early symptoms of ALS depend on which motor neurons in the body are damaged first. About 75% of people contracting the disease experience, limb onset ALS, that is, first symptoms in the arms or legs. Patients with the leg onset form may experience awkwardness when walking or running or notice that they are tripping or stumbling, often with a dropped foot, which drags gently along the ground. Arm onset patients may experience difficulty with tasks requiring manual dexterity such as buttoning a shirt, writing, or turning a key in a lock. Occasionally, the symptoms remain confined to one limb for a long period of time or for the whole length of the illness. This is known as monomelic amyotrophy. About 25% of cases are bulbar onset ALS. These patients first notice difficulty speaking clearly or swallowing. Speech may become slurred, nasal in character, or quieter. Other symptoms include difficulty swallowing and loss of tongue mobility. A smaller proportion of patients experience respiratory onset ALS where the intercostal muscles that support breathing are affected first. A small proportion of patients may also present with what appears to be frontotemporal dementia but later progresses to include more typical ALS symptoms. Over time, patients experience increasing difficulty moving, swallowing, dysphagia, and speaking or forming words, dysarthria. Symptoms of upper motor neuron involvement include tight and stiff muscles, spasticity, and exaggerated reflexes, hyperreflexia, including an overactive gag reflex. An abnormal reflex commonly called Babinski's sign also indicates upper motor neuron damage. Symptoms of lower motor neuron degeneration include muscle weakness and atrophy, muscle cramps and fleeting twitches of muscles that can be seen under the skin, fasciculations. Around 15-45% of patients experience pseudobulbar affect, a neurological disorder also known as emotional ability, which consists of uncontrollable laughter, crying or smiling, attributable to degeneration of bulbar upper motor neurons resulting in exaggeration of motor expressions of emotion. Citation needed. To be diagnosed with ALS, patients must have signs and symptoms of both upper and lower motor neuron damage that cannot be attributed to other causes. Progression. Although the order and rate of symptoms varies from person to person, eventually most patients are not able to walk or use their hands and arms. They also lose the ability to speak and swallow food, while most end up on a portable ventilator, called a BAPAP. The rate of progression can be measured using an outcome measure called the ALS Functional Rating Scale or revised ALS for ZART, a 12-item instrument administered as a clinical interview or patient-reported questionnaire that produces a score between 48, 
normal function, and zero, severe disability. Though there is a high degree of variability and a small percentage of patients have much slower disease, on average, patients lose about 0.9 FRS point per month. A survey-based study amongst clinicians showed that they rated a 20% change in the slope of the Elsperzar would be clinically meaningful. 5. Regardless of the part of the body first affected by the disease, muscle weakness and atrophy spread to other parts of the body as the disease progresses. In limb onset ALS, symptoms usually spread from the affected limb to the opposite limb before affecting a new body region whereas in bulbar onset ALS symptoms typically spread to the arms before the legs. Disease progression trends should be slower in patients who are younger than 40 at onset 6, 7, are mildly obese 8, have disease restricted primarily to one limb, and those with primarily upper motor neuron symptoms. 9. Conversely, progression is faster and prognosis poorer in patients with bulbar onset disease, respiratory onset disease, and frontotemporal dementia. 9. CX3CR1 allelic variants have also been shown to modify the survival time and the progression of patients. 10. Late stages. Difficulty in chewing and swallowing makes eating very difficult and increases the risk of choking or of aspirating food into the lungs. In later stages of the disease, aspiration pneumonia can develop, and maintaining a healthy weight can become a significant problem that may require the insertion of a feeding tube. As the diaphragm and intercostal muscles of the rib cage that support breathing weaken, measures of lung function such as vital capacity and inspiratory pressure diminish. In respiratory onset ALS, this may occur before significant limb weakness is apparent. External ventilation machines that use the ventilation mode of B-level positive airway pressure, the BAP, are frequently used to support breathing, initially at night, and later during the daytime as well. The use of BAP, more often referred to as non-invasive ventilation, NIVE, is only a temporary remedy, however, and it is recommended that long before BAP stops being effective, patients should decide whether to have a tracheotomy and long-term mechanical ventilation. At this point some patients choose palliative hospice care. Most people with ALS die of respiratory failure or pneumonia. Although respiratory support can ease problems with breathing and prolong survival, it does not affect the progression of ALS. Most people with ALS die from respiratory failure, usually within 3 to 5 years from the onset of symptoms. The median survival time from onset to death is around 39 months and only 4% survive longer than 10 years. 11. Guitarist Jason Becker has lived since 1989 with the disease, while physicist Stephen Hawking has survived for more than 50 years, but they're considered unusual cases. 12. In late stages the oculomotor nerve that controls the movements of the eye can be affected as can the extraocular muscles. The eye movements remain unaffected largely until the later stages due to differences in the extraocular muscles compared to the skeletal muscles that are initially and readily affected. Finally, patient condition may be mimicking locked-in syndrome. 13. Extraocular and skeletal motor units. Main article, extraocular muscles. Despite sharing fixed sequences of recruitment, extraocular muscles, EMS and skeletal muscles exhibit different characteristics. The following are characteristics of EMS that differ from skeletal motor units. 14. One neural fiber connects with only one or two muscle fibers. No ocular stretch reflexes, despite being rich in muscle spindles. No recurrent inhibition. No special fast twitch or slow twitch muscles. All eye motor neurons participate equally in all types of eye movements not specialized for sockets or smooth pursuit. There are also noted differences between healthy and affected EMS. EMS from post mortem donors preserve their site architecture as compared to limb muscles. Healthy EMS consist of a central global layer, GL, facing the globe and a thin orbital layer, O, facing the walls of the orbit. 15. EMS affected by ALS preserve the GL and all organization. 15. EMS possess the neurotrophic factors brain-derived neurotrophic factor, BDNF, and glial cell line-derived neurotrophic factor, GDNF, and these neuroprotective factors are also preserved in EMS affected by ALS. 15. Laminin is a structural protein typically found in the neuromuscular junction, NMJ. Lane. 
4 is a laminin isoform that is a hallmark of skeletal muscle and MJS. 16 patients with ALS showed preserved lane. 4 expression in EM and MJS, but this expression was non-existent in limb muscle and MJS from the same patients. 16. Preservation of laminin expression may play a role in preserving EM integrity in ALS patients. Patients with sporadic ALS cells have increased levels of intracellular calcium, causing increased neurotransmitter release. 17. Passive transfer of sera from cells patients increases spontaneous transmitter release in spinal but not EM terminals. 17. Therefore, it is assumed that EMs are resistant to changes in physiologic conditions typically found in ALS. However, some effects of disease were noted. EMs affected by ALS had a larger variation in fiber size compared to those in age-matched healthy controls. 15 EMs exhibited both clustered and scattered atrophic and hypertrophic fibers that are characteristic of disease, however, these muscles showed significantly less damage compared to limb muscles from the same donors. 15 These EMs also showed an increase in connective tissue in areas of fatty replacement and compensation of fiber loss and atrophy. 15 Ophthalmoplegia, a loss of neurons in and around the ocular motor nuclei, has been noted in ALS patients. 18. Additionally, there was altered myosin heavy chain content of the EM fibers, with a loss of normal expression of myxlotonic in the GL and the O did not contain myosin, which is normally expressed in this layer. 15. This change may represent a change in innervation pattern that may include reinnervation by a different type of motor neuron or loss of multiple innervations. Changes in my slow and my some are the only fiber changes seen in EMS, leaving the EM fiber composition relatively normal. 15. Because EMS are normally highly innervated, any denervation is compensated for by neighboring axons which preserve function. 15. Eye movement impairment. Patients with ALS may have difficulty in generating voluntary saccades, thus movements of the eye. 18. Saccade velocity is significantly slower in patients with ALS. 18. Problems in generating smooth pursuit and convergence movements have also been noted in patients with ALS. 18. Testing the vestibulo-ocular reflex VAR should help in identifying these deficits in ALS patients. 19. Electrooculography EOG, is a technique that measures the resting potential of the retina. EOG findings in patients with ALS show progressive changes that correlate with disease progression and provide a measurement for clinically evaluating the effects of disease progression on oculomotor activity. 19. Additionally, EOG may allow earlier, subclinical, detection of oculomotor abnormalities in patients with ALS. The embryonic lineage of EMS differs from that of semi-derived muscles. EMS are unique because they continuously remodel through life and maintain the population of active satellite cells during aging. 20. EMS have significantly more myogenic precursor cells than limb skeletal muscles. 20. Roles of lactate and cinnamate. Lactic acid is an end product of glycolysis and is known to cause muscle fatigue. Lactate dehydrogenase. LDH is an enzyme that exerts its effects bidirectionally and is able to oxidize lactate into pyruvate so it can be used in the Krebs cycle. Inium, lactate sustains muscle contraction during increased activity levels. EM that have high LDH activity are thought to be resistant to ALS. 21. Cinemate is a blocker of lactate transport in exogenous lactate on fatigue resistance. Cinemate is able to cause fatigue in EM, while decreasing EM endurance and residual force. However, Cinemate has no effect on extensor digitorum longus muscle, a muscle in the leg. 21. In contrast, replacing glucose with exogenous lactate increases fatigueability of AL muscles but not EM. 21. Fatigueability in EM was only found when a combination of exogenous lactate plus Cinemate replaced glucose. 21. Causes. Genetics. There is a known hereditary factor in familial ALS where the condition is known to run in families. A defect on chromosome 21, which codes for superoxide dismutase, is associated with approximately 20% of familial cases of ALS or about 2% of ALS cases overall. 22, 23, 24, this mutation is believed to be transmitted in an autosomal dominant manner and has over a hundred different forms of mutation. 
The most common ALS-causing mutation is a mutant SOD1 gene, seen in North American patients. This is characterized by an exceptionally rapid progression from onset to death. The most common mutation found in Scandinavian countries, D90A SOD1, is more slowly progressive than typical ALS in patients with this form of the disease survive for an average of 11 years. 25. In 2011, a genetic abnormality known as a hexanucleotide repeat was found in a region called C9 of 72, which is associated with ALS combined with frontotemporal dementia ALS FTD. 26, and accounts for some 6% of cases of ALS among white Europeans. 27. The world's largest genetic study called Project Mine initiated by two ALS patients is currently ongoing. It is a crowd-funded research project with many countries involved to discover more genes. 28. To date, a number of genetic mutations have been associated with various types of ALS. The currently known associations are as follows, type of gene locus remarks. ALS1, 105,400 SOD1, 21Q22.1 The most common form of familial ALS. ALS2, 205,100 ALS2, 2Q33.1. ALS3, 606,640, 18Q21. ALS4, 602,433 sex 9Q34.13. ALS5, 602,099. 15Q15.1Q21.1 Juvenile Onset. ALS6, 608,034 16P11.2. ALS7, 608,031. 20P13. ALS 8, 608,627 FAMP 20 Q13.3. ALS 9, 611,895 ANG 14 Q11.2. ALS 10, 612,069 TARD 1P36.2. ALS 11, 612,577 FIG 4, 6 Q21. ALS 12, 613,435 Optin 10P13. ALS 13, 183,098 X2, 12Q24.12. ALS 14, 613,954 VCP9P13.3. Recent new study shows strong link in ALS mechanism. 3, 29. ALS 15, 300,857 Ubcom 2XB11.23B11.1 1 described in one family, 30, ALS 16, 614,373 Sigmar 1, 9B13.3 Juvenile Onset, very rare, described only in one family, 31, ALS 17, 614,696 CHMP2B3 P11 very rare, reported only in a handful of patients. ALS 18, 614,808 BFN1, 17P13.3 very rare, described only in a handful of Chinese families, 32, ALS 19, 615,515 Herb 4, 2Q34 very rare, as of late 2013 described only in 4 patients, 33, ALS 20, 615,426 HNRNPA1. 12Q13 very rare, as of late 2013 described only in two patients, 34, ALS FTG 105,550 C9 of 72, 9B21.2 accounts for around 6% of ALS cases among white Europeans. SOD1. The precise cause of ALS is still not known, though a first important step toward determining the cause came in 1993 when scientists discovered that mutations in the gene that produces the CU-ZN superoxide dismutase, SOD1, enzyme were associated with some cases, approximately 20%, of familial ALS. This enzyme is a powerful antioxidant that protects the body from damage caused by superoxide a toxic free radical generated in the mitochondria. Free radicals are highly reactive molecules produced by cells during normal metabolism. Free radicals can accumulate and cause damage to both mitochondrial and nuclear DNA in proteins within cells. 
To date, over 110 different mutations in SOD1 have been linked with the disease, some of which have a very long clinical course. For example, H46R, while others, such as A4V, being exceptionally aggressive. Evidence suggests that failure of defenses against oxidative stress upregulates programmed cell death, apoptosis among many other possible consequences. Although it is not yet clear how the SOD1 gene mutation leads to motor neuron degeneration, researchers have theorized that an accumulation of free radicals may result from the faulty functioning of this gene. Current research however, indicates that motor neuron death is not likely a result of lost or compromised dismutase activity, suggesting mutant SOD1 induces toxicity in some other way, a gain of function. 35, 36. Studies involving transgenic mice have yielded several theories about the role of SOD1 in mutant SOD1 familial amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. Mice lacking the SOD1 gene entirely do not customarily develop ALS, although they do exhibit an acceleration of age-related muscle atrophy, sarcopenia, and a shortened lifespan. See article on superoxide dismutase. This indicates that the toxic properties of the mutant SOD1 are a result of a gain in function rather than a loss of normal function. In addition, Aggregation of proteins has been found to be a common pathological feature of both familial and sporadic ALS, see article on proteopathy. Interestingly, in mutant SOD1 mice, most commonly the G93A mutant, aggregates, misfolded protein accumulations of mutant SOD1 were found only in diseased tissues, and greater amounts were detected during motor neuron degeneration. 37. It is speculated that aggregate accumulation of mutant SOD1 plays a role in disrupting cellular functions by damaging mitochondria, proteasomes, protein-folding chaperones or other proteins. 38. Any such disruption, if proven, would lend significant credibility to the theory that aggregates are involved in mutant SOD1 toxicity. Critics have noted that in humans, SOD1 mutations cause only 2% or so of overall cases and the etiological mechanisms may be distinct from those responsible for the sporadic form of the disease. To date, the ALS SOD1 mice remain the best model of the disease for preclinical studies but it is hoped that more useful models will be developed. There is an online database available which was designed to provide both the scientific community and the wider public with up-to-date information on ALS genetics. This is known as Allsod website originally designed for the SOD1 gene in 1999, but since upgraded to include over 40 ALS-related genes. Other factors where no family history of the disease is present that is in around 90% of cases there is no known cause for ALS. Potential causes for which there is inconclusive evidence includes head trauma, military service, and participation in contact sports. More recently, some research has suggested that there may be a link between ALS and food contaminated by blue-green algae. 39. Unreliable medical source? Studies also have focused on the role of glutamate in motor neuron degeneration. Glutamate is one of the chemical messengers or neurotransmitters in the brain. Scientists have found that, compared with healthy people, ALS patients have higher levels of glutamate in the serum and spinal fluid. 23. Reluzol is currently the only FDA-approved drug for ALS and targets glutamate transporters. It only has a modest effect on survival, however, suggesting that excess glutamate is not the sole cause of the disease. Certain studies suggested a link between sporadic ALS, specifically in athletes, and a diet enriched with branched-chain amino acids. Cause, a common dietary supplement among athletes, cause cell hyperexcitability resembling that usually observed in ALS patients. The proposed underlying mechanism is that cell hyperexcitability results in increased calcium absorption by the cell and thus brings about cell death of neuronal cells, which have particularly low calcium buffering capabilities. 40, 41. There is evidence that superoxide dismutase 1, SOD1, protein misfolding propagates between molecules in a similar fashion to prions. 42. Another very common cause of ALS is a lesion to the motor system in areas such as the frontotemporal lobes. 43. Lesions in these areas often show signs of early deficit, which can be used to predict the loss of motor function, and result in the spread of ALS. 
43. The mechanisms of ALS are present long before any signs or symptoms become apparent. 44. It is estimated that before any muscular atrophy becomes apparent during ALS, roughly a third of the motor neurons must be destroyed. 44. Many other potential causes, including chemical exposure, electromagnetic field exposure, occupation, physical trauma, and electric shock, have been investigated but without consistent findings. 45. Pathophysiology. The defining feature of ALS is the death of both upper and lower motor neurons in the motor cortex of the brain, the brain stem, and the spinal cord. Prior to their destruction, motor neurons develop protein-rich inclusions in their cell bodies and axons. This may be partly due to defects in protein degradation. 46. These inclusions often contain UB10, and generally incorporate one of the ALS-associated proteins, SOT1, char DNA binding protein TDP43, or char or FUS. Diagnosis. No test can provide a definite diagnosis of ALS, although the presence of upper and lower motor neuron signs in a single limb is strongly suggestive. Instead, the diagnosis of ALS is primarily based on the symptoms and signs the physician observes in the patient in a series of tests to rule out other diseases. 47. Physicians obtain the patient's full medical history and usually conduct a neurologic examination at regular intervals to assess whether symptoms such as muscle weakness, atrophy of muscles, hyperreflexia, and spasticity are getting progressively worse. NRI axial flare demonstrates increased T2 signal within the posterior part of the internal capsule, consistent with the clinical diagnosis of ALS. Because symptoms of ALS can be similar to those of a wide variety of other, more treatable diseases or disorders, appropriate tests must be conducted to exclude the possibility of other conditions. One of these tests is electromyography, and a special recording technique that detects electrical activity in muscles. Certain F findings can support the diagnosis of ALS. Another common test measures nerve conduction velocity, NCV. Specific abnormalities in the NCV results may suggest, for example, that the patient has a form of peripheral neuropathic damage to peripheral nerves or myopathy muscle disease, rather than ALS. The physician may order magnetic resonance imaging, NRI, a non-invasive procedure that uses a magnetic field and radio waves to take detailed images of the brain and spinal cord. Although these NRI scans are often normal in patients with ALS, they can reveal evidence of other problems that may be causing the symptoms, such as a spinal cord tumor, multiple sclerosis, a herniated disc in the neck, syringomyelia, or cervical spondylosis. Based on the patient's symptoms and findings from the examination and from these tests, the physician may order tests on blood and urine samples to eliminate the possibility of other diseases as well as routine laboratory tests. In some cases, for example, if a physician suspects that the patient may have a myopathy rather than ALS, a muscle biopsy may be performed. Infectious diseases such as human immunodeficiency virus HIV, human T-cell leukemia virus HTLV, Lyme disease 48, syphilis 49, and tick-borne encephalitis 50 viruses can in some cases cause ALS-like symptoms. Neurological disorders such as multiple sclerosis, post-polio syndrome, multifocal motor neuropathy, SIB, spinal muscular atrophy and spinal and bulbar muscular atrophy. SMA can also mimic certain facets of the disease and should be considered by physicians attempting to make a diagnosis. ALS must be differentiated from the ALS mimic syndromes, which are unrelated disorders that may have a similar presentation and clinical features to ALS or its variants. 51. Because of the prognosis carried by this diagnosis and the variety of diseases or disorders that can resemble ALS in the early stages of the disease, patients should always obtain a specialist neurological opinion so that alternative diagnoses are clinically ruled out. However, most cases of ALS are readily diagnosed and the error rate of diagnosis in large ALS clinics is less than 10%. 52-53 In one study, 190 patients who met the MND-ALS diagnostic criteria complemented with laboratory research and compliance with both research protocols and regular monitoring. 30 of these patients, 16%, had their diagnosis completely changed during the clinical observation development period.
54. In the same study, three patients had a false negative diagnosis, myasthenia gravis, milligrams, and autoimmune disease. Milligrams can mimic ALS and other neurological disorders leading to a delay in diagnosis and treatment. Milligrams is eminently treatable, ALS is not. 55. Myasthenic syndrome, also known as lambert eaton syndrome, less can mimic ALS and its initial presentation can be similar to that of milligrams, 56, 57. Current research focuses on abnormalities of neuronal cell metabolism involving glutamate and the role of potential neurotoxins and neurotrophic factors. 58. Management. Reluzol, relutake is the only treatment that has been found to improve survival but only to a modest extent. 59. It lengthens survival by several months and may have a greater survival benefit for those with a bulb bar onset. It also extends the time before a person needs ventilation support. Reluzol does not reverse the damage already done to motor neurons, and people taking it must be monitored for liver damage, occurring in 2-10% of people taking the drug. 60. It is approved by Food and Drug Administration, FDA, and recommended by the National Institute for Clinical Excellence, NICE. Other treatments for ALS are designed to relieve symptoms and improve the quality of life for patients. This supportive care is best provided by multidisciplinary teams of healthcare professionals working with patients and caregivers to keep patients as mobile and comfortable as possible. Medications Medications may be used to help reduce fatigue, ease muscle cramps, control spasticity, and reduce excess saliva and phlegm. Drugs also are available to help patients with pain, depression, sleep disturbances, dysphagia, and constipation. Baclofen and diazepam are often prescribed to control the spasticity caused by ALS, and trihexaphenidyl or amitriptyline may be prescribed when ALS patients begin having trouble swallowing their saliva. 1. Therapy. Physical therapists and occupational therapists play a large role in rehabilitation for individuals with ALS. Specifically, physical and occupational therapists can set goals and promote benefits for individuals with ALS by delaying loss of strength, maintaining endurance, limiting pain, preventing complications, and promoting functional independence. 61. Occupational therapy and special equipment such as assistive technology can also enhance patients' independence and safety throughout the course of ALS. Gentle, low-impact aerobic exercise such as performing activities of daily living, adults, walking, swimming, and stationary bicycling can strengthen unaffected muscles, improve cardiovascular health, and help patients fight fatigue and depression. Range of motion and stretching exercises can help prevent painful spasticity and shortening, contracture of muscles. Physical and occupational therapists can recommend exercises that provide these benefits without overworking muscles. They can suggest devices such as ramps, braces, walkers, bathroom equipment, shower chairs, toilet visors, etc., and wheelchairs that help patients remain mobile. Occupational therapists can provide or recommend equipment and adaptations to enable people to retain as much safety and independence in activities of daily living as possible. ALS patients who have difficulty speaking may benefit from working with a speech-language pathologist. These health professionals can teach patients adaptive strategies such as techniques to help them speak louder and more clearly. As ALS progresses, speech-language pathologists can recommend the use of augmentative and alternative communication such as voice amplifiers, speech-generating devices, or voice output communication devices, and or low-tech communication techniques such as alphabet boards or yes-slash-no signals.